My name is John. I am 30 years old. I have been schizophrenic now for two years. The visual hallucinations began many years before. But I had belonged to a spiritual following that described my symptoms as a result of following a spiritual life. Consequently I never questioned the alternate forms of attention. Perceptions that were non-ordinary seemed to be a possibility and certainly nothing to be alarmed about. So, when I began to hear the voices of three individuals who did not belong in my perception appeared to follow the natural course of affairs. As far as my perception was concerned, this fell under normal circumstances. Therefore, as I delved further into the false reality, I did not bother questioning what I was going through. Or if there were questions I should be asking. The three voices were complete and total personalities. I saw them and heard them both in my mind and out in the world. They described themselves as teachers who understood human perception and its capacity to be manipulated. I followed them completely. I felt an incredible amount of energy. I never needed to sleep and would only catch 20 minute naps maybe three times a day. I lost the feeling that day was going to follow night and night was going to follow day. I was purely in the present. Sleep deprivation seemed to maximize my symptoms. But then horrid nightmares took over my life. If I managed to doze off, I would be attacked by terrible creatures who lived in this other reality. Staying awake was a matter of life and death, for I did not want to fall under the spell of these so-called creatures of darkness. People in the world began to talk about me. Most of the time I only heard them from across the room. They would always know what I was thinking. They pointed out my behavior to their friends as if I was reacting to their words. Even though I wasn't, just listening to them often provided theater for their continual words. The voices told me humans were prisoners of dark influences and that I should be mindful that at any moment they could turn on me. The voices also told me they were formless living creatures. That they could become any form in my mind and out in the world. That only those who follow a spiritual path could tune their senses to see them. I was not special in their opinion, I just did what was required. This was their explanation. And I didn't question their words. Or the fact that my senses have an intrusion of some kind. I could also feel them physically. All by their will, I could feel someone grabbing my arm and see an image of the person grabbing it. Most of the time it was an otherworldly perception. The voices had a presence that I could see and feel. They would swim right through me. They could highlight any sensation in my body. As they showed me this. I could feel my organs inside me stir. But something else became increasingly apparent. These voices are moving right in. I would wake up and actually wait for the moment they would start talking. Which was usually a couple of seconds after I woke. But I finally came to the conclusion that whatever is happening to me can no longer be considered a benefit. Now, since these voices are demanding so much of my attention and interaction, this can only be considered a liability. I had lost the feeling that I was alone in the world. And that bothered me. I had just checked into a hotel room and found myself yelling at the top of my lungs. Leave me alone. For the next week or so they pleaded with me to reconsider. That I could really use them. That I should fear what happens to me if they left. Over and over and over again I told them that it was truly my desire that they leave. I was polite. I said it's not up to them. Thank you, but I really want to be alone now. That didn't work. I begged them to leave. That didn't work. I insisted. That didn't work. Finally, not being able to appeal to their reason, I demanded that they leave. I cursed at them. I called them all the words I knew. I told them I want you to know that I will never follow them. That I would rather die than follow them. That my decision is truly final. By then, I no longer spoke with the real people in the world. Conversation seemed impossible, since I could only see the reality of the voices, and the world had lost its sense of importance. They told me that they really want me to know exactly what they mean, when they say, We don't want to leave. A sinking feeling fell over me. They are not going to leave. And what's more, they are not at all friendly creatures. They are predators who have all the time, and energy to be in my mind forever if need be. It was then that the people of the world seemed to be menacing creatures. 
Everyone began to talk about me. No matter where I went, it seemed I was in a world of hostile people all controlled by these voices. At the time I realized they were not going to leave, I was on a bus going across country. By the end of the ride I had one thought. I heard Bugs Bunny in my mind saying, I hope you know this means war. I was not going to just let this happen. I knew I had to be a fighter. At first, I thought it was them I had to fight. They knew this because, cleverly they set up challenges for my mind that would keep me occupied with their supposed reality. When I told the voices to go take a powder, they completely turned on me. They became horrid nightmares. They continued to fill my mind and eyes with terrible things. Most of it amounts to constant distraction. They meet every thought I have with a terrible reasoning for it. I realized that they, ahead of time, did all they could to remain the strongest focus in my mind. Whether I was willing to pay attention to them or not did not matter. They came prepared. Whatever was happening to me knew in advance that I would choose not to listen to them. To this end they simulated in my mind all my past experiences and put a spin and mood on it that was applicable to their presence. Therefore, if I remember common memories, it would bring up their reality as a subject. Antagonistic to the end, they managed to become a part of every thought and memory I had. If I visualize a memory in my mind, they would become the people in the memory causing me to shift from the memory back to the present. I could no longer journey into the past in my mind and had to stay forever in the present. I would see the people I loved or cared for being beaten by them or being affected by them against their will. If I tried to think of the future, they would describe outcomes like statistics, venturing false versions and ultimately dispelling my future projection in my mind. I truly did not know what to do. I would forget everything that was just said to me. I could hardly carry on a conversation with people. My head felt it had fallen into a heavy feeling of some kind. A fog that encapsulated my thinking and provided a perfect arena for their constant words. Their words became verbal assaults. They wished that they did this to me. Or they showed me constantly at what they did to me. I really didn't care that they constantly and verbally abused my head. What could curse words do to me? Nothing. And they knew this. They knew it didn't bother me the general subject matter they chose. Yet this supposedly added to the daunting. They wanted me to know that I was so beneath them. A mere toy for their pleasure. That when they fought my life, my mind, and my well-being. They did so in a shitty way. That I should get used to it. That they will teach me to respect that for the hundredth time this hour someone was saying fuck you to me. I found myself responding to them. How absurd it was for them to expect that I would care about it. This brought on a follow-up from them. And that brought on a follow-up from me. A constant back and forth that I seemed to never escape from. One day I called a long-time friend who understood what I was going through. He invited me to live with him while I got help. He was an over-the-road driver who took me in and sought to help me. I owe him for this great thing. If not for him I would not have had the opportunity to really examine just what was happening to me. There was always a constant distraction brought on by the voices. For only being a false perception they sure knew how to take up all of my time. The cognition of their reality was total and at every moment. They were fully engaging. But when I had a great thought, I should write down all that they do to me. Because I found that some of their responses to my mind or to my reflexology was routine. If there was a pattern to what they do to me then there must be pluses and minuses for their false reality to be true. If they could be predictable, I may find the secret to what they do. I bought a blank journal and took notes all day long on what they did to me. Since I really couldn't work, and my friend had graciously given me food and shelter, I had plenty of time to detail what was taking place. I found the most important finding yet when I began to write what was going on. There was a strategy to their projections into my senses. 